Hey, good morning. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to share this verse with you today. Thanks for joining me. This is in um, 1 Peter 2, verse 11. Behold, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust which wage war against your soul. The sentiment here is carried throughout the Bible that we are aliens, pilgrims, strangers on this earth. In short, this is not our home. I wanted to mention to you an incredible portion of a story that I read that just drives us home. In uh, 1914, there was a guy by the name of Ernest Shackleton, and he leaves England, and he was bound uh, to uh, explore and traverse Antarctica for the first time. So this was back in the great days of, you know, kind of exploration and conquest where they were uh, trying to make their mark of the known world, and Shackleton attempted to go across Antarctica for the first time. But immediately, uh, he and his 27 crew members, uh, on November 15th, they abandon their boat. Their boat gets caught in the ice. And from that time on, they have a perilous journey. It's just incredible story. Um, they have to cross the ice on uh, these ice flows. They end up losing everything. And they um, brace 60 mile an hour winds. They're in the, um, the center of Antarctica. And the crew finds refuge on a place called Elephant Island. But it's not their final resting place. The majority of the crew are way too... Um, uh, sick, exhausted, to make any uh, further attempt for rescue. So they begin to build a little camp. There's nothing there. It's just a tiny piece of barren ground. They take the boats. They turn them upside down. They're lifeboats. They have little pieces of metal, tiny slips of cloth that they use for clothing and makeshift shoes and just everything they can do to survive in Antarctica. And everything is precious to them. Little pieces of paper they read over and over again. Tiny cans they use for oil lamps. You can imagine, like, every single thing is counted and, uh, you know, used daily. It's just precious. They have no, um, they, they have only the essentials. But Things like a little tiny piece of metal that can be used for a f fish hook that would have been discarded now becomes this vital thing. Shackleton decides to take five men and further across uh, the Antarctic Oceans to get to a place where there's a known whaling station. When he gets there, he realizes, now you realize this is in the day where they're using sextants and stars to navigate and when he gets there, he's on the other side of the island. So out of the five men, he chooses three to accompany him. They cross this island, and they find a whaling station. And it's un there are people who are just in disbelief that he made it. Shackleton gets his uh, uh, a boat, tries three or four attempts, and he makes it back to Elephant Island to save the remaining crew members. So imagine all 27 are miraculously saved. This is one of the most incredible stories of human endurance ever. As they're saved, when Shackleton pulls up in a, a boat to rescue his people, keep in mind that he didn't know if they died. They didn't know if he died. They just, um, you know, they, they've been parted for so long the people that were in survival mode inside of these makeshift uh, tiny uh, huts made out of a boat and some rocks heard the ship coming and they went out, they you know carried some of the people, they 
as people were frostbitten and sick, they carried them out. All were saved. And one of the crew members, here's my point to the scripture, one of the crew members says to Shackleton, will you come in and take a look at what we've done so you can see how we survived, how we saved these little pieces, these little shreds of um, you know, cloth to make wicks and little pieces of tin to make oil and you know just everything became precious to them and Shackleton knew the ice could close at any time and he's like no we have to go and at that moment hear me out somebody somebody needs to hear that everything that was precious to them just an hour ago things that were uh absolutely essential for their survival that they held on to with absolute treasured passion they abandoned why because now they're rescued those little pieces of metal those little things were just worthless to them come on somebody let's get back to this verse second first peter 2 11 but i urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts that wage war against you guys we are like shackleton's crew when the lord comes uh, to draw us to himself either through uh, meeting him here on this earth or as we leave this earthly body that all flesh will uh, perish, we will have gladly left behind everything that we held precious in this life. So why not join me in living a life where we are living in reckless abandonment of this world and just seeing everything for the kingdom? You can't take it with you. I was reading... Uh, the story of Alexander the Great. When he uh, died, he told his men to do uh, three things. One, they to cut a hole in his coffin and let his arm hang out. Two, as they were um, carrying him to spread all the gold on the road, all of his possessions on the road to the cemetery. And three, he wanted his doctors to carry his coffin and you know wise man i believe he studied under aristotle they asked him why and he said well i want the doctors to carry my coffin because i want everybody to see that no matter how smart or how rich you are death comes for us all i wanted to make sure that my arm hung out so that people that would see my hand open and realize that you bring nothing into this world and you can take nothing out and I wanted to spread all my treasure on the road to the cemetery to show people that what you've amassed on this earth no matter how hard or how hard you've worked for it or what you've done to preserve it will go to another person you brought nothing into this world. You can take nothing out. Dave, are you like Debbie Downer today? No, this is freeing. Nothing else will make sense until you come to the point where you are just passing through. As a Christian, you don't belong here. There is another kingdom. Christ came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You're You'll be fitted with a new body. You'll be fitted with immortality. This mortal body will take on immortality. And finally, I'll see the Lord face to face. And all of this stuff will make sense. You can't live a Christian life focused solely on this world. It will frustrate you. Um, Paul said, if in this life we hope, what did he say? We're of all men most to be pitied. Why? Because we are kingdom people moving forward in a kingdom let me pray with you i thank you lord let me give you a view instead of my uh puss you'll get to see something looking a little bit better lord i thank you for everybody watching today 
And Lord, I know how pervasive this world is, Lord, that we need to get money and we've got all these things and these plans and we're so in, wrapped up in them, Lord. But at the end of the day, Lord, we can do nothing when you call us except go with you, Lord. And we will leave this world with empty hands, Lord God. Lord, this was just a training ground for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would bless every person watching with this incredible, joyous thought, Lord God, that we are just passing through. We're aliens and strangers.